Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, riveting, and amazing propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master propaganda here of Psych Defender of the Fatherland, off here to a 2v2 on Eindhoven country in the north. It is Stark, it is Sully, fighting for the German army, Deutschland. Here with the first Panzer Division with a lightning war, German infantry, mechanized assault, Firesturm. Elite Armour and Overwatch. In the south it is a Blazon and Stocky. Fighting for the Dead Army of the Soviet Union. Comrade Stalin. Here with the St. Guards Mechanized Corps with Mechanized Support. Defensive Tactics. Guard Motor. Combined Arms. Guard Motor. Mechanized Support. Heavy Emphasis in the Guard Commanders. Of course, the two classics. The classic commander, really. So... So it's in the south here, advancing for the Red Army, Germans in the north there, pushing ahead as well. And as always, a big hearty thanks to my patron supporters, wonderful people, one or without them, their support, the propaganda cast would not be possible. Other people can join likes my Patreon, Patreon, which certainly helped me out, then support worth it. Also, big thanks to Mayor me for donating and supporting the propaganda cast this via PayPal. Also, big thanks to him, and to other people who decided to do that. Links in the video description for that as well. And I'll let you know, comment, like, share, subscribe, press the bell button. Now, wait. Germans setting out. There we got Sully and East advancing for Deutschland. A small reconnaissance team there. Westwards here, a more steady infantry formation there by Stark. First engagement on the eastern side by the castle ruins here. As we can see, there both Stocky and Blazon are putting emphasis there against the Oberkommandos player. Basically, figuring that you know if they spot it can be much harder here for the Germans to make full use of the terrain here, either beat Oberkommandos or Wehrmacht. That, of course, means Stark has more time to up support his teammate around the centre, maybe swing towards the Soviets there from the west. So it's obviously a bit risky for them to overcommit there, but uh, at the same time, it could also lead to some initial gains and surprises there if they do pull it off. One contact with the routed here, definitely off to a good start here then for the Germans. Even in the east, they are having a bit of a hard time. Got the first unit routed, losses being inflicted on the Soviets at a pretty high rate here, but only one gun deal lost for Stark so far. Fulk is now pushing into the near saying heavy losses here, but it's still not doing great. His stocky and Blazon are pouring more troops into the meat grinder here for the glory of the Red Army. Fulk is moving up the Kubang Sturm Pioneer now moving on the fuel point here. The barbed wire is making things more difficult. And there we go. We got stocky flanking the infield in the So we got a grenadier squad there from Stark on the move. Third grenadier squad there. Fulk is close to being wiped out. Go gets the wipe here. It's a swarm of conscripts. Overwhelm here. Sully in the center, they're clearly not ready for this socialist massed infantry assault there. Third one is almost done, that's never going to hurt Sully here in the early. If he does have a truck out, could be planning elite armor and a fast 2 to 1. Also, worth noting, we have gotten another hot fix out, so things have been reverted. Though that said, lots of replays pretty much in the trash because of that. So, just a heads up on that one. Anyway, scrimmaging and more folks on the weather for Sully. East side, there we got Strumpian being swamped here again. Oh, that's going to be really uncomfortable for the gems. That is not one, but two wipes possibly in the early game here. Yup. That is a absolute concussive blow there to Sully. That is going to leave him in a very frustrating position. I mean, that is a Stoom Punier and a Fulton Escort just gone. That is a lot of manpower. Crucial, also a lot of crucial infantry presence right now. So, Sully is going to have to, at least for some time, do some more work supporting Stark here because he can't really conduct operations on his own right now. So, this is a pretty big win for the Soviets. Like, they'd have to, like, play very passively not to, like, and exploit this. We do see here, for example, Stark's moving the machine to assist here on the right flank, expecting the search to make a push for here very sensibly. Sully is trying to replace the losses. Guess no elite armor here from him. At least not right away. If you had planned a 2-1 to one rush, I think that dream has been put to rest. Send here is to continue to be a strong point again due to the sandbags here. The Germans could consider wiring off and then mining the area here to deny the Soviets at least temporarily access to this. That's it. Enough. Stock is not exploiting this, you know, uh, losses there for Sully very hard. He's not, like, trying to push very hard towards. We are seeing some presence there now. And similarly, Blazon is not, I feel like, being as aggressive as he could either. So despite, again, landing some pretty hard blows to the Germans, the Soviets are taking this pretty cash. Obviously, they shouldn't get overconfident, but at the same time, we should expect some more aggressive reconnaissance to figure out where the Germans, like, you know, re-diverting the forces to, like, you know, because they can't cover everything now once, you know, Sully's pretty much got, like, you know, his nose cut off. But that's it. They're focusing center east by the looks of it. And we can see, I think Stocky is realizing, hang on, if they're pushing center east, they've got nothing in the west there. So, thumbs up there to Stocky. Again, I feel like they could have done this a bit faster. Machine sitting up in the shed here. The shed would, after the war, be executed for aiding the Germans. Thoughts with the country in the east. In the east. I'd like to make a nice company up there for Stark. 
chuckling up there for Sully. And we got the first commander here. It is Great Shock. Guard Motor with T-3035s, heavy mortars, guard rifle infantry, vehicle crew repair training, and marked vehicle. Crew wagon can use the conscripts in the center here, and the force is falling back. Comes the routed there. East side there, we got force position. We got 2 to 2 on the way there for start. We got a mechanized running here for Sully. Probably figuring that uh, he's going to have to like rely on something with a bit more shock effect here, perhaps, to turn the tide against the Marxist Leninist threat. Almost got the contract board here, and if they can get the wipe, that certainly helped the German situation. But there we go, they do get the wipe. Obviously, it doesn't magically absorb Sully's losses, but you know, it does help Chelsea close the gap. And there we go, Stocky in a also surprise move. Goes for guard mode. I know a lot of veteran players right now are just absolutely flabbergasted. Guard motor, the most popular commander. They both pick it. Yeah, I know. Anyways, hey, mortar for Blazon and Stocky with the guard rifle infantry. We're placing losses there. So that's going to add some more pressure to the Germans. The hay mortar, of course, is a very potent tool, in particular on a map like this, in particular on the east side, because that is a very narrow-ish map with a lot of choke points meaning you know there's going to be a lot of cases where the germans can accidentally just end up bunching up there i mean there's going to be some great targets for the heavy water in the west side we've got a pretty big push here but stark here going in offensive he's going for lightning war here with g for the fees tactical movement relief infantry tiger tanks and these two close air support the armor car getting knocked up dust man to get out of there g for the fees could be a good addition here for stark but i'm maybe going to be looking at light machine guns as they are just the overall safer pick and now we got the Hay Mortar at work here against the Germans. We got Garson's Wall here for Blazon and the Red Army. Friedrich there getting blown to bits, leaving his Sergeant Engelbert to pull back the squad there. Puma out there for Sully, obviously looking to perhaps, you know, shut out the possibility of like a Soviet light vehicle rush here. Plus getting the unit wiped there. It was really lucky there for Sully, honestly. And you force the guard squad there and the conscripts holding up two squads here. Very good there for Stark. Pack 40 there for him as well. Obviously very concerned about a possible anti-aircraft half attack or T's in a rush here from the Serbs. Though neither Blazon or Stock here making the move towards it, but very sensible there. And again, I suspect part of Sully here rushing out the Puma is also just the mind game aspect of it. Basically he's signaling to his opponent they're going to go for T-70. He's going to make that very, very uncomfortable for them or an anti-aircraft half track. So with this, he's basically, I think, projecting again, hope in his mind, he hopes, a sort of, you know, sphere of don't go for light tanks or you're going to regret it so they can maybe, you know, push harder for something else there. So it's an interesting strategic move. You can see this actually taking up there for the Shvear Punted Quarters. I imagine Sully will next, of course, move in for some Orbs of Darden, which is definitely what, like one strand you can commit to as the Orbital Command Vest if you suffer early on. You try and rush for the Shvear Punted Quarters and rush out the Orbs of Darden. It obviously has some risks, but at the same time, it's not a completely, like, you know, stupid strategy. It's obviously not what you should do all the time, but if you're, like, in a bad position, trying to rush out Orbital Darden can be one of those key ways you can suddenly swing the game around because the Orbital Darden are quite good and they do pack quite a punch with upgrades, so they can definitely help you swing a game around there for you. So that definitely makes sense here if that is what Sully is scheming. That's it, Sully's currently the only player without a commander yet. We got armor covers to come needs in the west here. Hey, more to move towards the center, provide more coverage across a well broader spectrum of the map here around just the east side. We got the field grenade for Blazon. Of course, worth noting, another server player, of course, has tagged up again. They probably have seen the Puma gone. You know what, coming it? I don't think a light tank will be worth it. We got the concept of the armored car and the kind of use with G 33s after all. Very nice. Thumbs up. Again, I will say the map definitely encourages more here because, again, there's a lot more close corners and such. So bit more room to leverage the G33s. Grab the center here, grab these in front of the conscripts. Got a nice deep flank attempt by Blazer now against Stark. Sully of course is just, he's even going for more full than he is now, so I was going for the Belgo headquarters, not even going to rush out the Orbital Garden. I was actually expecting that, honestly. That seemed like the most logical course of action to me, but Belgo headquarters some medics and I guess more full than with the sort Raft, I mean that does make sense too. He hasn't gone for it. He's actually planning out to go for MP40s. I mean, that could also work out. They do tend to get overlooked, but like four squads with MP40s can absolutely wreak some havoc on the Soviets. Make no mistake. Puma there with no kills as of yet. Guard for taking some losses. So, so far, could 
got pretty good map draw with the Germans, the victory points wise. They are definitely struggling a bit there. And we got the cool bug there hitting a mine. Or was a mine stuff against it, I don't know. I love those two options, I suppose. Got the gun is pushing forward to the G for the field, the Gewehr 43. North here, armored column is knocked out there. Push forward here against the sword infantry. Then we can see their Starks infantry in a pretty weak condition. They probably should have treat them and also probably should start upgrading some more of them with their guns of a higher rate of fire than the Car 9 TK. Holding up here, push back there. Do we any tech? Yes, we do get tech there. Good for him. We got also the repair pioneers up here. Thumbs up to Solly. This is also a great way of assisting himself without having to meet to go for more student pioneers, but also of course allows his teammate to get his stuff repaired as well. There's definitely some benefits from there that way. Now we can see that with more infantry for Sully, he's starting to venture eastwards again, like you know, he's rebuilt his forces. Yes. Ceased to play defense, he's gone on the offense versus opponent again. Thumbs up there to Sully. And of course the search now more folks around the center. That does mean he might act at least for a brief while more east in the east to make progress. So we'll have to see what happens next here. We got a line for gun for him. We got the tech almost down there for Stark. No commander yet there for Sully. Matches so far have been fairly fluid with some surprises here down there. Going to send him before the court for the catch of the country. They've got flanked by the guardsmen though. Forcing an immediate surprise there. Unsurprise. Retreat unsurprisingly. And the armor card gets knocked out for the double field gun combo. Leaving Stark there a little less mobile here against his Marxist opponents. Machine that will also fall back, but again, two machine guns in particular on a map like this can of course also be quite effective and you know, slowing down so it assaults and of course giving us all the ability to leapfrog with them. So like I said, one machine gun up there covers the field, moves the other machine gun forward, and then you can sort of like have the machine guns create bounding overlapping fields of fire and that way you sort of make a slow advance here against the opponent, for example. Anyways, another pack 40 here. Hmm, makes me think he's either planning to store for a Tiger tank or at least go for tier 4. Could be wrong, of course, we do still see more players. Yeah, there we go, tier 4. Again, we do see players against... Go more for like double packs when they're going for support more core, but I feel like that's more for like 1v1 maps. Let's see, I'll say more open. We can't as easily just set up with a pack 40 there. But on a map like this... Double packs to me at least screams more of like, you know, I want the big stuff. And there you go, more T-33s here for Stark's men. T-33 was based off the Soviet SVD-40, specifically the firing mechanism, as it was, they technically had a semi-automatic rifle before that, the G-41, which used the Danish firing mechanism, known as the Bang mechanism. Not because it went bang, but because the guy's name was Bang, like his surname was Bang. Like, Bang is his Danish surname. Fun fact. Or bang, to be more specific. But yeah, basically, and turns out it wasn't super reliable, so they looked for something else. They came up with the G33 in the end there, so little fun fact there. Western Point, we see what they're gonna do is. Moving <clears throat> forward catching the contract there with the G33 building gonna do is here. He's flanking in. Additional fun fact, this S-54 was also just popped amongst German troops, but used it as a trophy weapon. In particular the Waffen SS, because it was a great way to increase the school's firepower rule. We got heavy pants crop there for Stark, so I'm guessing not a tiger stall, which would definitely be an advisable. Overall, I guess I still think just going straight for tier 4 is not super advisable, but like, you know, if it's a choice between, I like, say, brushing up Sturm Panzer, Panther, or over a tiger tank, you know, makes sense to rush out either of those two because you don't have to wait like forever to get them going in terms of command points. So that obviously is much wiser of the two decisions. See, T for the rushing 40 course, so it's going straight for that again. With a Puma out, there's less attempt to go for the T 70s, they're going for the T 34s and such. He could, of course, go on for the T 35 as the Puma can sort of fight off against the T 34s and 6 under right circumstances. Other way, that definitely gives the Germans a bit of a headache there. Suddenly, they're faced with the armored battering ram there. Puma the moves in, they could shot, then the T 34 some 6. <clears throat> Second shot misses. Push back. I feel like the Surge could 
more pressure on the left flank again. Like, they're getting, I think, a bit too keen on the center here, which again is not bad, but like, you shouldn't forget, like, other parts, other ways to maneuver around your opponent. And this regard, the west side just feels very overlooked. Since the German terms are exactly a large defensive line around here, which is typically like, you know, one of the ways you could disincentivize the opponent from being westwards. It's like, have something here, but the Germans just, like, they got nothing. It's so, like, there is easy, I think, room for the search to push through here. East side, there is some lot of skirmishing. And Stark and Sully's looking to regain the castle here from the Red Army, but there we go. That T-3035, I think, will put a bit of a stop to those dreams. Also a bit surprised we haven't seen a heavy mortar from Stocky. Because, you know, the heavy mortar is really good, and, you know, you'd figure they at least want to go for some more of them. Because double heavy mortars on this map is absolutely nightmarish. Make no mistake. We've not, uh, got double line for guns here for Sully, bringing his own light to bombard the Bolsheviks. Not a bad idea, he's finally going to take out there. Question, of course, is will he try to stall right for the King Tiger, let it go for something else? He does have a King Tiger bulletin. And yeah, now, he could be one of those players going to make a King Tiger work, but there's also the counter argument that maybe she just go for something, you know, less expensive first, at least. As for Stark, he can soon go for the Sturmpanzer. In fact, he can go for it now, but he could also be playing the Panther with the Rabble with the T-34s. Oh, he does go for the Sturmpanzer Fee. He's also lost a Pack 40, though. It doesn't look like the Sir Attack to manage to run off with. We've got the Katusha instead here for Starkey. Again, nothing wrong with Katusha. Very powerful rocket artillery. For very obvious reasons. Again, arguably just had a heavy mortar out soon and then just started churning out more tanks here as the Germans. There's always something to consider there. East side, a bit of skirmish on this point. There you go. Fultz get a wipe there on Blazon. Great kill there. Fortress moving up here. Again, Sully getting more aggressive. He still hasn't picked a commander though. He's also floating an incredible amount of munitions. Not on touch his plane. At this point, it feels like it's going to be Overwatch for Sector Assault. It could still be like, you know, Firestorm, I guess, for the Rocket Barrage, maybe the Incendium Munitions. It could also be Lead Armored again. Heat Shells, Storm Tigers, Panzer Commanders. Like, there's plenty of options there for Sully. It's just so far, for whatever reason, Sully is holding back on them. Puma here flanked by the T-34 from 6. I mean, the Puma with the Heat Shells would certainly have a bunch of us. The T-34, there you go. Getting caught by a lot of Panther Fuzz here. That could actually cost Stocky there his T-34 from 6. He was obviously hoping to knock out the Puma, but that clearly did not go the way that Stocky had imagined. That did not go his way at all. T-34 defined their strikes. Like a brick through the window there against the Fultzman Deers. Shreya up hunted quarters almost authorized there for Sully. He's being bombarded here by the T-35 and his 85 gun in the east side. A small social advance on the Fultzman Deers here. Quickly, comrades! Slay the fascists! Couldn't we, like, shoot them? That's what I mean, you idiot! Panther... Oh, cancels the Storm Panzer for a Panther, alright. Panzer come fighting film to actually three quarters of the way done, I think, for Stark. Now, at this point, he's so kind of close to the target tank. At this point, he might as well just kind of go for the target tank, I suppose, but... I guess it's not that big of a deal. I'll wait Panther right around the corner. As for Sully, some Orpus alone, of course, would be a good addition here. Commander would also be great here. Nice push here by Stocky, like a hot, hot socialist knife through German butter. He goes straight for the fuel point here. And also catch the pioneers. Almost gets them wiped, but there you go. Nope. Machine. Oh, he does retreat. They actually, I think when they like, tried engaging ahead, or maybe kill, killed the gun repeatedly. Like, light machine and troops can be really good at that, particularly guardsmen. Oh wait, got the Panther out here for Stark. The Panzerkampfwagen 5, adding the pen amount of MD42 on top. Panther shoots, misses. Got the fault of the Garsman, feel them going up here for Stocky. Double bombs, in fact, that. Straight into the sound of the Panther. Second shot goes for the frontal armor. Nick is charging forward today. Again. Tiger tank unlocked. The question is, does he bother with it now? Or does he just go for more Panthers or Storm Punts? As for Sully, there's a massive manpower flock kind of going on. I really think you should go for some Orbital Garden. Or some Storm Punita. Just, you know, not float a thousand manpower. I feel like it's uh, 
the ideal game plan there for Solly at the moment. Mines up in East here, looking to further fortify the castle ruins against any German advance. Got the issue for that blazing. Need to fix up that panther there, though. Going to the point name. We got the Puma going for deep flank. Looks like he might be scheming to catch the Katusha off guard. Do not very comrades. We are very safe in the re echelons. Not even the Germans could penetrate with an armored car, bypass all of the sentries, and blow up this rocket truck. Fear not, comrades. The fascists are not that smart. <clears throat> Pushing from the northern castle ruins here with the fault is the Sturmgewehrs raking the Soviet infantry with hot lead and forcing quick retreat there for Blazen. Caught here by the Maxim now. Less devious maneuver there and by Sully, at least not fast enough there for the to avoid the Maxim. Pack Forge remain in position here. Germany from force with limited support though. And we got Stalky with another T-35. We got the East Fire there for Blazen and the Red Army. T for the front of the cattle pulled for the Eastern Victor Round. They got the pantling up here for Stark. Moving ahead here for Deutschland. Flanking flank here with the 5. Stark very quick gets the hand and backs out of this panther. The Puma down here sort of just waiting. I guess with the go sign. Alright, that's a go sign. That's schnitzel. Nein, it's not schnitzel. Oh, I would like the schnitzel to be the go, but. Oh, shut up, Ludwig. Rockets firing with the Panther on the for Stark. Puma there is going in for it. Of course, he also probably has an idea where the Katusha is. But yeah, we can see sort of like a deep infiltration move here with the Puma. Probably in one way route of suicide mission, as the Germans called it a Himmelfahrtskommando. Which basically means, you know, heaven bound mission. In this case, though, a bit too many soldiers around here. That set was still exploded by Tanner from the other front. As the Puma ultimately still ends up drawing away attention from the front line. Gets one of the T-35s, which is, I mean, for Puma, that's a pretty good trade-off, honestly. That's a pretty good trade-off. But they probably would have loved to get Katusha out of the way there. Of course, it could still have an effect, because it might cause a certain more paranoid about the flanks and the possibility of, like, more armored cars, you know, going in a very, very deep Sunday detour. West side, they've got probably never stock at the Western Victory Point. Aircraft not in the skies and crashing into the shed. Kind of a barrage off here, I think. Another aircraft shot of the skies. That is a lot of aircraft just getting knocked out of there. Look, comrades, the fascist aircraft are being shot out of the skies. No, comrade, that's ours. What? Oh. Damn fascists! Thought going straight for the conscripts, pushing them back here. Sully has finally gone for commander. It is elite armored with 221s, metro repairs, Panzer commander, heat shields, and the Sturm T. He's also gone for the Panthers and pin on machine to that. He gives a press then, pin down. Still flooding a lot of resources. I still think he'd benefit from some more to be honest. Now they could choose a barrage here from Stocky this time with. Slightly added impact, getting some damage in, but crucially, not really killing any Germans. Found to take some light hits here from the field gun. A few glancing blows. But nothing structurally significant to the Panthers' continued welfare. Smoke pod around here by Sully. Good work there. You also got the Stuga Close Air Support ready here for Stark. I do wonder what Sully's planning with all that manpower, or if he even has a plan. And he's got close being wiped out here by Blazon's T-3045. Field gun number two on the for Blazon. Good shots on the T-35 punching through the front llama. T-3046 here for Stocky. And there you go, another Katrusha Barrage. This time from Blazon. Almost got one of Stark's Pack 40 crews there, but... 
sadly not having too much. And in this regard, the Germans are doing a very good job of spreading out their support weapons so they aren't easy targets for the Katushas. And of course, still the heavy mortar, but that clearly is not being used as actually as it could, in part, I imagine, due to the double art infantry guns, which are also spread out. Again, thumbs up to the Germans there. We also got solid fighting gun for something. It is the Stuck of the Fuss. Plus, some orbs are done. Finally, some resources being expended there. West Fort's here. Guards from the win. The folks at the Western Victory Point is once moment to advance here from the second guards. Mechanized call in the center. Stark orders are going to be his forge there. The stark reminder given to them that failure could mean the destruction of Deutschland. Machine gun team the white with the heavy mortar. Almost got a white pit on Stocky. Can the gunners get it? No. Nope. Push back then. East side here is continuing scrambling here. The castle ruins remain a Marxist fortification. A bulwark of socialism. Pantheon torches to the Stuckers of us almost enough for Sully. MD 42 more here to start. And the Galilees are being absolutely bombarded here by the T Fed Fours. More Katrice fire here. Right here, the jump have made a mistake and they bunched up too close. I and mean, that suddenly the Katrice becomes a lot better. Still getting a bit lucky there. Could have suffered heavy losses. Panther dives ahead there. I'm guessing that was a misclick here by uh, Stark or a miscalculation. Ends up taking a lot of damage, almost got destroyed. Actually, that was really lucky there for start. That in fact did not happen. Like, you know, bit of wrong RNG, and that Panther would have been a mis well, not a museum piece even. And there goes Stukasa first, first volley, and it is a complete and total bust as it hits absolutely nothing except the ground. Storm Pioneer, final for Sully, thumbs up. As for Stark, his Panther calls in dying repairs. I guess we'll have to see what it goes for next. Will be another Panther, will be a Tiger, will be a Storm Panzer. A lot more fighting on the sides that are going with them too, though. Crucially, no real major so defenses through the sides. Like, they're still very focused just like any major movements happening in the center. They right into where most of the German guns are currently pointing. East side then, MD 34 from Sully quickly stops a. Soviet platoon squad assault there, pushing it back there with some well placed fire there, pantoming up as well here. So what would the Germans go for next? And what would the Soviets do next? I mean, Blazon here has actually got too many units to call in more armor here, so they have to suffer some losses. As for Stocky, there's definitely more room that said. Blazon could build fuel caches to assist him and his teammate, you know, in the future. <clears throat> we'll have to see that. Gonna need charge on the mine here. Lightning gun firing down there as well. There, and bigger push into the castle ruins. Right as Blazon's forces are elsewhere. You can see there, Stock is putting in armor to assist here. Rushing in the T-34 from 6. Making use of the train here to get some easy crashes in. Then further casualties. Thumbs up there to Stocky. Maximum gets wiped. The folks there, close being wiped out. Mines exploding here. A pretty brutal repulsion here of Sully's forces alongside Starks on the west side. Some. More pushes there. We do have a booby trap down here from Sully. A little gift there for the Soviets. There we go. Kaboom. And there's something that needs to be caught even before we got Ace level on that one. Thumbs up. No incendiary on his rounds at this point. Once you're getting bombarded, obviously shouldn't pop in. Stark, he can soon go for another Panther. Is that what I want? He could also hold up for the Tiger tank, I guess. Don't think he's going for a Storm Punts at least. And there you go. More Katrisha. Fine. There you go. Second volley hits more bunched up support weapons. Definitely getting more painful for the Germans. Can the Soviets exploit these other forces in such a condition they can actually make use of this though? Another Stukas was barrage here and... Well, that actually did something. It even took out one of Kat the Katrushas in fact. That was the thing. Stockies. Stocky continues definitely to suffer the brunt of the losses here. Whereas Blaze and sort of, shall say, having a slightly easier way of it. Another Panther for Stark here, no Tigers for him. And you've heard fallen a good position of the Sun Infantry, backed up the Panther in the center there, slow advance here by Stocky. We do have a slight push here, Panther with the damage engine. We've got a machine car at Western Point here, they have to go for deep flank. We'll get into Marma in the center there, MU-34 is a bit of MU-42 is a bit of trouble, we got bombardment, bombardment from the field gun there. T-34 joining as well here, and wipes it. Minor blow there to Stark. And we got a Katusha Barrage, or oh, not Panzerwerfer Barrage actually, Panzerwerfer, 9 kills on it, but nothing sitting from the Soviet side so here, we got the machine gun with field being pushed back, the pan falls are back north here due to the sudden presence of a lot of firepower from Blazon. 
And we got tactical movement here from Stark. Going in a swift counter offensive he was completely blindsided Stark in particular. Now that's Blazon has over commanders of the Castle Ruins. He cannot ease his support team. That's a really good reading association here by Stark. Good read in particular again. Realize again that Stark is the weaker one. And with Blazon busy in these with his armor and his support weapons. Can't respond fast enough to this daredevil dive with his infantry. Thumbs up to Stark. That was a work of beauty. Even also tries to hold up one of the field guns, though. I think they're supported by the Panther or the Panthers to clear them up quickly. But either way, though, definitely disrupt here Stalker's positions and has perhaps allowed the gems like move up their front line quite significantly if they're fast enough about it. And once more puts the pressure on Blazon to carry the fight here. Oh, uh, that's two Panthers here for Stark and one for Sully for a total of three German Panthers. There's a lot of Panthers. Will Sully try for another Panther here? They can't really afford one now. Gotta fit one in. Panther bombarding here, the third infantry. Got the field gun issue from me on the flank, engaging here. Stark's Panther with indiscriminate anti tank fire, pushing down to half health. In the center, Kanska coming up in the victory point there. He should fight the T-Fed on the west side here. Good shot on the cool number they should have five. More rocket fire here, crashing to the ground, causing confusion and consternation amongst the Soviet troops. West side here, T-Fed fort, pushing back the Fulton these. Panther on the move here, five kills, red 71. Got 231, was 3 and 17. Starkey there looking to make up for losses. It's Blazon still floating on resources. So I really feel like a fuel cache. If you'd done that several minutes ago, I think would help out Starkey to bring in more tanks, honestly, at this point. So I feel like there's definitely more Blazon could have done. There you go. Panther catching the T-Fed for some 60. This high velocity in front of the gun. Got Stark's number one Panther moving in as well here. Flanking the T-Fed for some 6. But misses. Bit of luck there for Stocky, which he certainly sorely needs. Panther shoots, misses. Even with a Panzer Commander. And another unit wiped here. Line for gun cleared out. Well, Sully can theoretically go for a second Panther soon. Yeah, he can go for another one now he wants to. Which point again, the Germans will have a total of four Panthers. Anymore, prove the line for the gun. Pictures from West looking to silence that German MD 42 there. Asian the Farms on the Fistocky. Blazon continues to float the lot of resources. Because he can't really spend. There you go, Panthermen crushes the almost the entire guard squad. That's a quick reaction there for Stocky. Had he been a bit slower there, that would have been a full roadkill medal there for the crew. Panthermen up for another barrage. How'd you go? Well, for the low angle one. I think that's the first time I actually managed to catch one of them. I'm not sure if it's better or worse, honestly. It's just, I've literally never seen it used until now. At least caught someone using it. Panther being pushed back. Closer to that Panther, but also close to exploding. So I could also go for Sturm Tiger now, though of course it's not impossible my playing of King Tiger. Since he does have the bullet for it, but the question is, would it just make more sense to go for something else than that by now? Pushed off piece and victory point with the claim in the centre on the west here. Good push here for the third the looks of it. Definitely catching the Germans a bit off guard. That said, it could perhaps enough for a counter kind of push here. Stark has suffered a particular heavy hit down fairly short infantry. It does look like Sully is Gun here for the Königsteiger, the Tiger 2. Got the team for the Fossum 6 here. Good kill here by Deutschland. Stocky continues to suffer the heaviest blow. There you go. Blaze and A stance. You know, suffer some losses. Stance will add in some tanks. We've got two T 3045s on the way for him. And we do get Sully here with a Sturm Tiger. So things are about to get pretty explosive. Well, explosive here. More explosive. Got the first T-35 ready here for Blazon, second one still on the way here. As to Stocky, hopes it's hard to go for. Gem 2 is mounted in the center, trying to push to the west side as well here. 
Do we have an MD-42 that's stolen from the Germans ready to defend T? Panther's being fixed up. Sturm Tiger advancing here. German infantry probing pretty aggressively here against the Soviets across the entire front. It's pretty risky for Sully, but at the same time could also part them with valuable information. West side here is going to be caught with M42. Which is fine the German position of the Western Fields. Sturm Tiger remains in reserve. Not quite ready to reveal its existence. Probably waiting for the right time to just see the pull of surprise. I mean, he's basically hiding behind this shed. Hoping for someone to go for that center of exit and then just go surprise. And then realize it didn't matter because the ones in surprise are completely dead. No, Uberrasium. Stugas as far as here. This time, a bit more of an impact. Eight kills, close 22, and their Stroom Tiger shoots. Only gets three kills. That wasn't a particularly great surprise there. Panthers lining up here for a deep flank against the Soviets. Not bad, but the losses in the center for the German army are definitely piling up here. Mine goes off there. Pack landing hit. I think he's basically using the gun. He's a mine sweep effectively. Bold and brutal. But there you go, with the mine checked. He's pushing in, they're going for a flank here. H-5 tank getting knocked out. Panther getting into two. There you go. H-5 tank destroyed. Kaput. Will they keep up with the assault with the back off gun? He's flanking against the machine gun here. Panthers are in fact backing off. In the center here, what's going on there? We got the second T-55, almost done for Blazing. Got a strong Panzer now on the way for Stark. In the center, Katusha gets awfully close. It almost could have been knocked out there. Gun is being causing further confusion chaos. The Panther, the Vetsy 2 1, is on the offensive again by the looks of it. In the center here, further retreat here from Blazing. Panther moving up here for Sally, could pop the heat shells. We do get an artillery strike called in the center of the double field guns. Not bad. Panther left flank here, pressing against the Soviets. 2 2 1 now for Sally. Interesting choice here. Curious as to why he's doing that. Panthers bang off the west one with the damaged engine. Storm Panzer was almost done there for Stark. We got 150 force of 300. T3055 almost done. Falls with the close being wiped out. Sniper for Stark. I'd say the timing for that is a bit curious. Not entirely sure why I go for a pan sniper here, but oh well. Got the Storm Panzer out. Storm Tiger ready to fire again. And we got heavy mortar bombs with the delay fuse going off here. Hands are lining up for something. Gotta get aggressive here. Calling with air support as well here. Unleashing the power of the Luftwaffe. Two Katrushi C could become the target of the. Stuka Kanonen Vogel, Panther 82 diving in there, go rocket strike, clears out on the Katusha's field gun caught as well here, a devastating push here, field guns, Katusha's, T-35s there, was an H-5, was an H-5 there, all exploding here, and the Germans have yet to commit all of the reserves here to this assault, with this stock in place and pretty much renders this dual hammer blow completely breaking the morale, so there you go, GG, game over, a fierce 2v2 here on... Iron to win country. I feel like in this regard, the Serbs could explore the map much better versus the Germans. I feel like they're too, you know, focused on the center there. Could have moved more around the map there. Could also have gone for more heavy mortars or more guards. I think there's some areas that they could improve upon. The Germans, I feel like some more elite infantry from both German players, like Panzer and Diesel and Orbison, would have been a great idea there at least sooner for Sully. And obviously, also very risky for them to both go for like Panthers and all that at the same time. So, you know, one of them going for Panther Force, at least I think, would have been a bit. Safer, but I'll wait. Hope you enjoyed this match and learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on it. Tell a friend, tell a family, but don't tell enemies. This is Imperial Link, and cheers. Thank you for watching. Until tomorrow again for our next episode. Bye.